What's up, mob? Hey, how we doing? Man, triple crowns, they make for so much excitement. Tomac, gotta win. I was wrong, guys. I honestly didn't think he'd get another win the way he was riding. Hey, he's the second winningest Supercross rider of all time for a reason, but I'll get into that and more. Justin Barsha looked like a paid hitman out there, but I got a different point of view on it, and I'm gonna bring that to you. But hey, guys, remember, subscribe, and please double check and make sure you're still subscribed. Yes, it's still happening. People are being unsubscribed for no reason. I've had people all week hitting me up and letting me know. Yes, I'd love to stop saying that, but unfortunately I gotta remind everybody because it's still happening. So subscribe and it helps the channel, helps the algorithm, and we'll keep putting these videos out. So let's get into the St. Louis madness. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say that's the bad guy. Eli Tomac fans have got to be ecstatic over that result. Eli Tomac is back. Does that mean he's going to win all the time? I don't know. I don't care. I'm just super happy that he came back because he didn't have to come back this season. In fact, he even mentioned that he had been doubting whether he should have came back, which tells me he's probably not coming back next year. So enjoy this Eli Tomac. Enjoy him getting a win. You know, he rode really good. He was there all day long. Yes, he got a little luck. The AMA did some stuff, but it doesn't matter. Racing is racing. Just as easily as you could be a victim of the AMA, you can benefit of the AMA. It just, you never know what happens. But if you don't think that there was a long odds on him winning this race, gambling is now available. You go to betonline.ag. Tomac, earlier in the week, was an 8-1 to one underdog to win this race. Who would have thought that on a triple crown? If you would have given me those odds any other season, I'd be like, you're an idiot. I'll totally take that. Uh, but he was an eight to one dog. So if you bet 10 bucks, you won 80 bucks. But honestly, I, like I said, I wouldn't have put that money on there because I didn't think it was going to happen. I am eating my words. I thought Tomac would never win again, but I'm so glad to be wrong on that one because he's just, I mean, he's, he's an icon of the sport. And boy, this championship sure got interesting in a couple of different ways. The AMA, they are the worst sanctioning body of any organization that I think I've ever seen. And I love how they act like they're not actually the promotion because the AMA pro racing is in bed with, the, they're, they're paid by the promotion, Feld, MX Sports. So it's, it's so weird how they, how they, it, it doesn't seem like an independent body. They really make some strange calls. And this one's really weird. And I, I, I just, I don't understand why. Okay, so I understand that the red flag was out. That's the rule. Why are you putting the red flag at the top of the jump? There's some stairs right there. Send one of the five officials standing there down to the bottom of the corner and hit the red cross flag right there. You had plenty of time. Like it was two laps. They got Jason Anderson on two penalties. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty silly. Imagine from the rider's aspect, you're coming out of that turn. You're focused on this deep, nasty rut right before you take off, off a jump. There's a flag on the inside. It's a white flag. They're waving it to distract you. And there's a little red cross flag next to like a red Rocky Mountain logo. You want these guys to decipher all that and make the decision not to jump while going through a deep rut looking forward. Come on, man. If there's ever a time to let them off the hook for the red cross flag, this is it. If you have five guys, five guys that committed the penalty, clearly, the penalty is unjust or unfair. It, it, it was stupid. And it changed the entire... It, honestly, a lot of the reason I think Jet, it, it changed the way his mentality was going into that third one. I'm not saying it directly affected what happened, but I don't think it didn't. The AMA has got to figure something out with this Red Cross flag. When the Red Cross flag comes out, maybe they have to move it. You know, they put the yellow flag at the top of the jump to warn you, right? That's fine. Cause then you're, you know, but if you want to do a red cross flag where you're asking these guys to make a decision not to hit a gigantic jump that has life changing consequences, if you make it or don't, 
you need to give them a little bit more of a heads up. Maybe they, when they do a red cross flag, they put it at the bottom of the jump. So whenever you see a flag at the bottom of the jump, you know, like, you know, at the face of it, you know, not to jump. Like, I mean, it's it, putting it at the top of the jump next to the white flag. I mean, why don't you just stand on the landing with a red cross flag and then just penalize them? Like it, it, it really is tough. It's a game of, you know, who actually got to see it. Are you battling with somebody? If you're battling with somebody, it's so hard. It's so hard. Like these guys talk about how often they read their, or should I say how unfrequently that they actually even read their pit boards. And those are stuck out there for them to see because they're focused on racing. It's unrealistic and we need to figure something out. If you guys have any better options for these red flag penalties, let me know. I, I understand you sometimes we need guys to roll out of safety, but what they're doing right now isn't working. We had the futures out there last night and a lot of amateurs. And if you want to navigate amateur racing, head over to Coach Rob's podcast. Once a month, him and Derek Harris are going through how to navigate amateur motocross. So head over to his channel, watch that video and kind of guide yourself through your amateur racing. Epic Garage Designs has some of the coolest stuff. Flooring, racks, cabinets, maybe soon toolboxes. There's some cool stuff from Epic Garage Designs. Just go check out the site, epicgaragedesigns.com. Now let's break down Jet getting clobbered. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw it, it looked like there was a bounty on Jet's head and Barsha wanted to collect. He came in there and hit him as hard as I've probably ever seen in Supercross. I mean, that was every bit as hard as when Michael Essie hit Brock Tickle or when Ryan Dungey nailed James Stewart and knocked him cold. But these two incidences, like if you want to, before you burn Barsha at the stake, look at the big picture. Uh, Jet is so fast and he's so good at squaring these corners. Nobody expects a guy to just be able to pivot and go like he does, much like James Stewart used to do. I had people comparing this to the Michael S.E. Brock Tickle incident. I didn't see it. I didn't see many comparisons. This was much more like when James Stewart at Anaheim, it's early in the race and he pivots just like Jet did and tries to square the corner up while Dungy's coming in. He almost get a head on collision. It was, it was James's fault. James got knocked out, but Dungy nailed him. It is, it, this is very similar. This is Jet's fault. I'm sorry. You can't square the corner like that this early in the race. Barsha, yes, he's probably coming in there a little bit too hot. And yes, these veteran guys want to rough up Jet. So of course he sees Jet. He sees Vince on the inside. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go in here a little hot. If I have to lean on Jet, so be it. They don't like Jet. Jet's competitors whether it be jealousy, whether it be whatever the reason, he's not real popular with his fellow racers and they would love any chance they get to take a shot at him. Not like what happened. That was one of the, that was an incident where Barsha was probably like, I'm going to protect from Freezy and go figure Freezy's involved in every controversial issue ever. Even if he has nothing to do with it, he's somehow involved. So he's protecting the inside from Vince and he's blocking. And as he's going in, he's expecting Jet to go high and he's coming in there hot. And I don't think he cares if he hits Jet on the outside. But then when Jet squares that quickly, Barsha has no time to react. And bam -o, he just nailed him. That's it. Um, it's pretty pretty basic, but it's, it's Jet's fault, guys. I'm sorry. You know, you guys want to crucify Barsha, penalize Barsha. That was Jet's fault. I'm not, I'm not looking at Barsha's history. Because he's done some stupid stuff. When he broke Tyler Bauer's leg, I wasn't really happy about that. He's done. He's got a history of stuff. But this wasn't his fault. He came in there early in the race. This is something Jet has to learn. Like He's so fast that I don't think he's used to having guys be in a, in a position to hit him. Because usually when he gets around guys, he's gone within like three turns. He's got that lightning speed. And then he rides the track like he's out there by himself. Unfortunately, on that first lap, you know, he's slowed up by Hunter and some of the guys in front of him. Barsha and Freezy, they're really close, and he rides it like they weren't. And that's Jet's fault. So do not blame Justin Barsha. I mean, maybe just a touch, maybe like 10%, but that is Jet's fault. Nobody all night, nobody was taking that line 
in traffic. If you watch when Chase Sexton and I forget, I think it's Anderson are coming through there, when they're battling each other, both guys squeeze and they take a similar line to what Barsha was trying to take. That's the defensive line. That's what you take when you're in traffic. You cannot leave yourself open to that gigantic inside when guys are racing behind you. You just can't. Guys, head over to ridestrap.com. Get your goggles, glasses, shirts. Ridestrap has some of the coolest stuff, and they support privateers, racing, me. Great company, ridestrap.com. And if you're shipping anything with a truck, use Precision Transport. They have customer service, family-owned business, and really good pricing. So try Precision Transport at pretransport.com. Some of my videos end up just like rants and bitching about stuff. This is one of those videos. Other than Eli Tomac dominating, which or winning, which was awesome. That's all positive. The rest of it, we got a lot of negative in this video. So it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to apologize for that. That's what happened last night. We had a lot of negative. We had the AMA screwing up. We had, you know, Barsha clobbering Jet when it was Jet's fault. Then I'll be honest with you. I was, listen, I'm a, you guys know I'm very hard on Ricky and I really like Jason Thomas. Jason Thomas did a great job. By the way, what he gave us during the main when he said, uh, what is Barsha doing coming in there so hot? That's what I want from my broadcasters. Hey, I don't think that was the correct analysis, but JT has balls enough to put it out there. And then if you watch the breakdown they did when they wrapped it up, he explained the situation a lot better. JT is literally money out there. Unlike the other guy that I feel, I think, uh, learning lessons. God, the stupid phrases he, he repeats over and over drive me nuts. But Will Christian, you're sick. Obviously, you are sick. So why are you sharing a mic with all of our top athletes? Are you trying to get them all sick? Um, take the night off. Uh, let JT cover the whole thing. It's not life or death. But now you you'd rather... Tough it out. And I understand Will is an athlete herself. So she likes to, she, I'm, she's tough. She's going to play through anything, but please don't get our athletes sick. What are you doing up there? Like literally using the mic, talking really close and then handing it to the top riders right when they come off the track. So, you know, their immune systems are a little bit down. They're tired. Oh, I was just, uh, uh, it, it, it drove me nuts. NBC, Feld. Uh, oh, come on guys. Like if somebody's sick, don't put them on the broadcast or at least pull them from close interviews. Let her do track reports, pull her off that one task where you interview the guys directly. Come on. The other real gripe I have is with the futures race. I'll break down the actual racing later on, but why the hell don't they just fix some of those lips? Ricky, the puppet that he is claims that they want the riders to have the most true track that they'll be racing as a pro but that's a lie because i just watched the pros race right before and right after and they fixed the track for those guys so ricky you're lying um i don't know if you're a puppet or you're dumb but you're lying because i watched the futures take off on a track that was worse than that what they will see as pros and guess what most of these guys will go into the 250 class and the track won't be like that that won't be the track until they're a 450 rider towards the end of the moto. 250s almost always their first couple of heats. That track's in good shape. Yes, it gets a little torn down in the main event. And then in practice, they usually go first, except for when they do that stupid schedule where they tried the 450s. But, like, it's just not true. Like, I don't know if Ricky's dumb or a puppet, but that's just not true. Like, if you want to tell me they didn't fix the track because of time, and the futures aren't as important as the night show, as the, as the pro racing. That I get that. I'm fine with that. I don't like it, but I understand it. Don't lie to me and tell me it's because you're preparing them. Like it's somehow a benefit to these riders that you're going to send a bunch of guys who aren't, aren't familiar with Supercross out on the most treacherous, dangerous track you can. Yeah, let's go ahead and hurt the future of the sport. Come on, guys. We can do better than that. All right, guys. That's it. I got, I'm got. i going to come back with a 250 video, and I got a lot of topics to talk about this week. There's a lot of meat on the bone. Um, hopefully, I don't rant like I did today, but it is what it is. I'm going to tell you what I think, and sometimes I get a little pissed off. So thanks, guys. I appreciate all the support. Subscribe, and I will catch you later.